Hey guys, welcome to These Are the Books of the Bible. I'm Mr. Joey. This episode, we're going to start on the New Testament. This is episode six of These Are the Books of the Bible. Just like all the previous episodes, we have a worksheet that goes along with this one. So if you want to check out any of the previous episodes or download the worksheet for this episode, you can find them at JesusSaidKids.com. You can go there now. Our goal has been to memorize the books of the Bible and get familiar with each of them. And we've done that by breaking them up into different groups of different kinds of books in the Bible. And so far, we've covered all of the Old Testament. I bet you've memorized it by now. But to make sure, or if you're still learning, you can sing along with us. We have a song called, These Are the Books of the Bible. Let's hear it. Here, yeah, the B-I-B-L-E. That's the book for me. Whoa. Come on and sing with me. Oh, oh. These are the books of the Bible. Oh, these are the books of the Bible. Oh, these are the books of the Bible. And if you sing with me, then you can learn them too. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Joshua, Judges, Ruth. First and second Samuel, first and second Kings, first and second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, yeah. Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Jeremiah's Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Mike, and Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Zechariah Malachi These are the books of the Bible Oh, these are the books of the Bible These are the books of the Bible And if you sing with me, then you can learn them too Oh, these are the books of the Bible Oh, these are the books of the Bible Oh, these are the books of the Bible And if you sing with me, then you can learn them too Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts, Romans, 1st and 2nd, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd, Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd, Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd, Peter, 1st and 2nd, 3rd, John, Jude, and Revelation. Whoa, these are the books of the Bible. Oh, these are the books of the Bible. Oh, these are the books of the Bible. And if you sing with me, then you can learn them too. Oh, these are the books of the Bible. Oh, these are the books of the Bible. Oh, these are the books of the Bible. And if you sing with me, the B-I-B-L-E, this will always be the song that you'll sing to. to do how much of it did you know and since we've already learned the books of the old testament that means we're now on the what the new testament so what's the difference between the old testament and the new testament the old testament is the collection of 39 books that covers all the history of the israelites the story starts in the very beginning and then we learn about the exodus and the law of god and then all of the history of the kingdom of israel we learn the poetry and the wisdom and the songs of ancient Israel. And we learn the messages, the warnings, the prophecies, and the promises of God to his people that were shared through his messengers, the prophets. The story of the Old Testament is God keeping his promises to his people, the Israelites. So then what is the New Testament? The New Testament is a new story, a new promise, a new message and a new messenger from God. Do you know who this messenger is? His name is Jesus. The New Testament is 27 books, and just like the Old Testament, they're divided up into groups in your Bible. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the first group of books in the New Testament. You're gonna be very familiar with this first group. I want you to say them after me. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. 
Have you heard those before? Say them again with me. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. These four books are a special group. Do you know what they're called? We call them the gospel. That's right. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are the four gospels. Do you know what the word gospel means? It means good news. And we get that term gospel from Jesus. He said it himself. Read with me what Jesus said. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Mark 1.15 See, Jesus told the people that the kingdom of God was now here and he had the message for it. And this message was gospel, good news. These gospels all covered the same four things. First, the stories about Jesus, his miracles, and his teachings. Second, they cover Jesus' betrayal, his arrest, his trial, and his crucifixion, his death. Three, they cover Jesus' resurrection and the message he had after he rose from the grave that he had for his followers. And lastly, all four Gospels answer one big question. Who is Jesus? So you may be asking, if there's one Jesus and one message and one story, why do we have or need four Gospels? It's easy to understand, really, because Jesus had these disciples and these followers. They all went out and began to preach and teach about Jesus. But they would preach different stories and different teachings that they recalled from Jesus. So as they went to write down their collections, their testimonies, their biographies of Jesus, different stories were in different Gospels. And by comparing the different Gospels, you can see by which stories they chose what was important for them to share about Jesus. Let me show you an example. So if you were gonna write the story of Jesus, where would you start? You would start at the beginning. But what does the beginning mean to you? Let's look at what the four Gospel writers chose for their beginnings. Matthew's beginning starts with the birth of Jesus the Son of God who was born of a virgin and laid in a manger in Bethlehem. Do you know that story? We call it the Nativity. Both Matthew and Luke begin their Gospels with the Nativity. But Mark skips the Nativity story and begins with Jesus as a 30-year-old man beginning his ministry. Did Mark know about the Nativity story? Yes, of course, but the story he was telling was the ministry of Jesus. John tells a nativity story too, but it doesn't start with the baby. John's gospel starts with the same start as the Old Testament, in the beginning. John wants us to know that Jesus was there even at the beginning of the creation, at the same time as the beginning of Genesis chapter 1. Isn't that interesting? The gospel writers chose different places to start as the beginning. And there are many stories that are in all four of the Gospels. Stories like the baptism of Jesus, the feeding of the 5,000, the Last Supper, Peter's denial of Jesus, the crucifixion, the tomb being found empty, and Jesus appearing to his disciples after he resurrected. Three of the four Gospels are very similar, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Almost half of these Gospels are filled with the same stories that are not included in the Gospel of John, like Jesus being tempted in the desert and Jesus calming the storm. The Gospels of Matthew and Luke are the most similar. Almost 60% of them are covering the same stories, like the parable of the lost sheep and the Lord's Prayer. You can find those in Matthew and Luke, but not in Mark and John. The Sermon of the Mount is only found in Matthew. Luke has the story of Mary and Martha and the Good Samaritan. In Matthew, Mark, and John, Jesus walks on the water, but that story is not in Luke. John's Gospel is the most unique. About 90% of it is only in the Gospel of John and not in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Like Jesus turning water into wine, like Jesus washing the feet of his disciples, and Jesus meeting with the old man Nicodemus and telling him, you must be born again. 
And even when you find the same story in all four Gospels, they read a little different. They come from different perspectives. Let me give you a good example of that. Let's look at a story about a woman who was very important to Jesus. Jesus said her story would be told every time the Gospel was shared. And that's true. Her story was shared in all four Gospels. She anointed Jesus with oil to prepare him for his death and burial. Matthew tells us she had a very precious oil to pour on Jesus' head. Mark adds that the oil poured on his head was spikenard. Luke tells us the woman was a sinner and that she poured the oil on his feet. John tells us her name, Mary, and also tells us she poured the oil on his feet. The same thing happened. Mary broke her precious jar of oil and anointed Jesus' head and feet. But the four Gospels tell the story a little bit different because it comes from four different viewpoints. I think it's amazing that we can know these stories are true, not because they're identical, but because they have little differences. We can tell that four different people actually saw the same thing happen. Is it easier to believe something when four people said it's true or only when one person said it's true? That's especially important when four different Gospels tell us that Jesus rose from the grave. They all saw him. They all had their own story to tell. So if they're all the story of Jesus, do you need to read all four stories, all four Gospels? The answer is yes. One, because I know you'll be blessed by them. But most importantly, it's because they all answer the big question a little differently and all four of them you need to know. The question is, who is Jesus? So let's start with the first gospel, the gospel according to Matthew. Matthew was written by one of the 12 disciples of Jesus. We're introduced to him as a tax collector named Levi. Jesus said, come follow me, and he did. And if you wanna know what it's like to have listened to Jesus, you should read Matthew. Matthew has the largest collection of Jesus' teachings in the whole world. It has entire sermons of Jesus. Jesus' most famous sermon is called the Sermon on the Mount, and it starts in Matthew chapter 5. I bet you would recognize a bunch of it. And if you love the Old Testament and learning about the Old Testament, you should also read Matthew. Matthew's Gospel mentions the Old Testament, its prophets and verses over and over. It mentions many of the Old Testament prophecies and how Jesus fulfills them. It clearly shows us that Jesus is greater than Moses. He's greater than King David. And if you ask Matthew the big question, who is Jesus? He would say, Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and the promised King. So now let's look at the Gospel according to Mark. Mark was not one of the 12 disciples. So you say, well, how does he know what Jesus said and did? How does he know these stories? Well, the answer is simple. Mark was one of the disciples of Peter, the closest disciple to Jesus, who is there for almost everything. So the stories in Mark are the stories from the testimony of Peter. Mark is the shortest of all the Gospels. It was actually written to be read in one sitting, or for some to be memorized. And it reads like a story. It's not filled with long sermons and teachings. It mainly is showing us what Jesus did. So if you ask Mark the big question, who is Jesus? He would say, Jesus is the Son of God. And what did he do? He came as a servant and he suffered for us. When somebody asks me about reading the Bible, where should I start? I always tell them, start with the Gospel of Mark. It's the shortest one, you could read it in one day. But it's so important, do you really know what Jesus did? The Gospel according to Luke is the longest Gospel and the longest book in the New Testament. Luke is interesting because it was not written by one of the 12 disciples. And Luke was not even a Jew. It was written by a Gentile doctor whose name was, of course, Luke. If you like watching the news or reading biographies, you would really like Luke. The Gospel of Luke actually starts with Luke writing, I went and tried to make a full account of the life of Jesus. So I went and interviewed all the people, the eyewitnesses who saw the life of Jesus. He probably interviewed 
Peter and James and John and even Mary and Mary Magdalene of all the things that happened. It was important for Luke to get this story right. Why? Because Luke was out traveling with Paul and they were proclaiming the gospel to all the Gentiles. Luke was written by a Gentile for the Gentiles. And who did Luke and Paul tell the Gentiles Jesus was when they were out traveling and preaching? They said Jesus, this Jewish man, was the Son of God and the Savior of the whole world. Then we get to the Gospel according to John. You know John. He was one of the 12 disciples of Jesus. Like we said before, John's Gospel is the most different from the others, and it was actually the last Gospel to be written down. It is filled with stories and teachings of Jesus that are not in the other Gospels not because he was the only one who saw them, but because John had a special relationship with Jesus. John had a very close relationship with Jesus, and there was something he learned about Jesus that he wanted you and me to know. And what is this message John wanted us to hear loud and clear? Who is Jesus according to John? Jesus is the man who is God. Jesus is God. He even said so himself. Let's read it out of the Gospel of John. So I need you to grab your Bible, open up your Bible, open it up to the Gospel of John. It's at the beginning of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So grab your Bible, open it up now, and turn it to John. We're going to go to John chapter 14, verse 9. The book is John, the chapter is 14, the big number, and the little number is 9. Jesus is answering a question from his disciples. One of his disciples, Philip, just said, Please show us the Father. If you just show us the Father, then we'll believe. Here's how Jesus answered him. Let's look at John chapter 14, verse 9. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip? even after I have been among you for such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Jesus said, look at me. You're looking at the Father. Jesus was saying, you are seeing God before you. Wow, what a statement by Jesus. And how do we know Jesus is Lord, that he is the Messiah, the Savior of the world, that he is God? because the Gospels tell us so. We say Jesus is Lord, Jesus is God. We know because Jesus told us so. How do we know that Jesus loves us? Because it's written down in a book. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. So I want you to read the Gospels for yourself, kids. You can do it. Start with the Gospel of Mark. But let's get familiar with these books of the Bible. Let's continue to memorize them together. So let's finish up with our song, These Are the Books of the Bible. Sing along. Yeah, the B-I-B-L-E. Oh, that's the book for me. Whoa. Come on and sing with me. Oh, oh. these are the books of the Bible. Oh, these are the books of the Bible. These are the books of the Bible And if you sing with me Then you can learn them too Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers Deuteronomy Joshua, Judges, Ruth First and Second Samuel First and Second Kings First and Second Chronicles Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther Yeah Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes Song of Solomon Isaiah, Jeremiah, Jeremiah's Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Mike, and Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. These are the books of the Bible. Oh, these are the books of the Bible. These are the books of the Bible. And if you sing with me, then you can learn them too. Oh, these are the books of the Bible. Oh, these are the books of the Bible. Oh, these are the books of the Bible. 
And if you sing with me, then you can learn them too. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Acts, Romans, 1st and 2nd, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd, Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd, Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd, Peter, 1st and 2nd, 3rd, John, Jude, and Revelation. Whoa, these are the books of the Bible. Oh, these are the books of the Bible. Oh, these are the books of the Bible. And if you sing with me, then you can learn them too. Oh, these are the books of the Bible. Oh, these are the books of the Bible. Oh, these are the books of the Bible. And if you sing with me, the B-I-B-L-E, this will always be the song that you'll sing to me.